There's been so much happening in Donald Trump's criminal trials over his attempt to overturn the 2020 election. And if there's one thing I hope you'll take away from this video is that all of it has been extremely bad for Trump. And if there's two things to take away from this video, it's that it's also really bad from Mike Johnson, the newly elected Speaker of the House. Here's a clip from an interview I just did with one of the most famous legal experts in America, Barb McQuaid, a former U.S. attorney and a legal analyst for NBC News and MSNBC. Because of her contract with those news organizations, I'm not going to show her speaking on camera, but listen to what she has to say about the recent plea deals for former Trump lawyers Kenneth Chesborough, Jenna Ellis, and Sidney Powell. Free and how they destroy one of Trump's biggest defenses in these criminal trials. And then I'll tell you why this is also really bad for Mike Johnson. Let's hear from Barb. The plea deal for Chesbro might have been more legally significant. Yes, I, I do agree with that. I think because Sidney Powell was the one who talked about release the Kraken and was out there making these outrageous statements on air that she was the more high profile. But Chesbro, as you say, is the architect of the fake elector scheme. He wrote some memos that said, I think the likelihood of this theory actually prevailing will, will fail, is very low, but it will be good for us politically. It will buy us time. It will control the public narrative. And so those admissions that they knew that this was not a legitimate good faith claim of election fraud, but was instead a strategy to unlawfully hold on to office, I think could be really powerful testimony against all the higher ups. This could cause John Eastman to flip, who was a lawyer of, of Trump's. It could cause Giuliani to flip and it could be really incriminate. I think the testimony of Chesbro at trial against Donald Trump can be really powerful. One of the potential defenses that Trump was going to rely on here was I was just following the advice of counsel. The fact that these attorneys are taking these plea deals and providing evidence would seem to blow all of that up. It can really uh, destroy Donald Trump's ad advice of counsel defense. The defendant has the burden of, of, of showing all this evidence. And what they have to show is that I relied on advice of counsel in good faith. And I did this thing thinking it was lawful. The fact that we've got now three lawyers saying, no, this was all, this was all fraud all along is very important as well as the point you just raised about the attorney-client privilege and the crime fraud exception. I think one other factor that drove the guilty plea for Kenneth Chesbro is the judge in the case, a few days before the trial was to start on Monday, ruled that the attorney-client privilege would not apply because it was pierced by the crime fraud exception between him and Trump. The judge had reviewed these documents and said, no, I believe by a preponderance of the evidence that a crime or fraud was occurring here, all these memos are coming into evidence. I think it is going to do significant damage to his advice of counsel defense. We've got the White House lawyers, the DOJ lawyers, his campaign lawyers, and now these co-defendant lawyers all saying this was not a good faith effort. I think at some point a jury is going to find it difficult to believe that he relied on the advice of counsel in good faith. A key part of Trump's defense is I was just relying in good faith on what my lawyers were telling me. It's sort of the Shawshank Redemption defense. Hey, well, what's your radio for? It's done. No, now, three of those lawyers are likely to testify that they knew and that they told Trump that all of this was legal malarkey. It was all a political maneuver to confuse the issue, muddy the waters and buy time. So that's terrible for Trump. It really blows one of his biggest defenses out of the water. But here's why it's also really bad for Mike Johnson. He played a key role in Republicans' efforts to overturn the election. He was the ringleader behind getting more than 100 of them to sign on to a lawsuit trying to wipe out the vote in four states that Joe Biden won. And when two thirds of all the Republican members of the House of Representatives, 139 of them, voted to have a coup and overturn the election, almost all of them said that they relied on arguments from, guess who? Mike Johnson. Now we have all of the lawyers getting set to testify that they knew these legal arguments were false and bogus. And if they knew, he knew. So yeah, it's terrible legal news for Trump. It makes Mike Johnson look horrible. And as for the fact that Trump is still far and away the leading nominee for president, and Johnson is the unanimous choice of House Republicans to lead them and now second in line to the presidency, that really tells us who Republicans are. But I guess we knew that already. Hey, if you like what you're seeing here, please don't forget to subscribe to Blue Amp. Follow me at Matt L. Robeson on Twitter and leave us a comment.